And if I can have everyone's attention, we'll uh, go ahead and get started. The first part of our winner's press conference here at Kansas Speedway. Uh, we welcome owner Jack Roush of the number six Cargill Sam's Club Ford uh, for winner Ricky Stenhouse Jr. today. Uh, Mr. Roush, talk a little bit about that exciting race out there and the victory with Ricky here today. Uh, if I can get my heart back in my throat, <laughs> I'm back in my chest, I, I'll be all set. But, you know, today was a never, a never say die day for the guys. You know, they. Uh, well, Ricky has been uh, fraught with frustration over some of the things that's happened, and the crew chief has been, his, uh, Mike Kelly's done his best to figure out what he needs, and it's been a building year. We had the year, probably this year, that we should have had last year, and last year should have been the year that we're having this year. But at any rate, the car was not very good here in practice. They were a little disappointed in the way they qualified. It was a revelation when they uh, got in the, in the race that they fi figured out uh, when they stayed out when everybody else pitted that the car was pretty good out front. And so from that point on, they, uh, they decided they were going to try to stay out front all night uh, or all afternoon so that they could be uh, have the better uh, uh, setup uh, going for them. And, of course, then they, Ricky had his, had his problem with uh, Joey Logano, which was what I saw was 100% Ricky's fault. He just ran into him, and uh, I'm sure Ricky will call Joey and talk to him about it next week, so I'm, we're, we're all sorry about that. But I figured that was the end of the day for him. He wound up losing two laps, had the car tore up. Probably the rear axle's bent, the truck arm's bent, and certainly the quarter panel is, uh, is organized so it wouldn't make much side force. So I figured that would be the end of it. And then, of course, as, as we got closer to the end, and I've been doing this for 25 years and watching it from a, from a safe uh, vantage point behind pit road, and uh, I had a feeling that, uh, that making up the lap when he did and where everybody else was on gas could be a, a, could be a formula, could be a, uh, a strategy that was going to wind up winning the race. And, of course, that caution came just at the right time, and it, it took a while to clean the racetrack up and ran everybody out of gas. So it was a race that we didn't deserve to win. But the ones who won, a lot of the ones we have deserved to win, we haven't uh, haven't been able to to to, uh, to be successful with. So we'll take this and we'll move on. All right, we'll take questions for Mr. Roush. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start here in the media center. We'll stay, start right here in the middle with Stan. Jack, watching this race all day today, how do you think what we saw today will relate to what we will see tomorrow? Well, I think the racetrack got better uh, as rubber built up on it today. Uh, I think it was better after the Arca race than it was before, and I think that uh, I think the second groove will open up pretty good, and it'll be uh, it'll be the kind of Kansas uh, race that we've been used to with a little more grip. And uh, I guess tomorrow is supposed to be a little bit uh, a little bit warmer than it was even today. But I think the racetrack's going to be fine. The apprehension we had about getting on and off pit road proved not to be a problem, or at least I'm not aware that it was. And uh, I think they're going to have a great race tomorrow. The fans will really enjoy. Okay, we'll take our next question right here. Jack, Scott Trailer, Sports Radio 810 WHB Racing Boys. Um, you know, it's well documented, Ricky's start in his career and how bumpy the road was. What, what would you contribute to him turning it around and being where he is today? And how much of a role do you have when you go in and you speak with him on Mondays after a race? Well, I, I'm one of the bookends for Ricky. The other bookend is his dad, and we try to keep him standing upright and, uh, and keep properly aligned. Uh, Ricky is, uh, his, he was, uh, watched his, his father, who was a great, uh, Ricky Sr., was a great uh, a sprint car racer. And so he set high standards for Ricky. Uh, Ricky raised himself to be a race car driver, and uh, he's, uh, he, he wanted not to mess it up. I want to follow up with that. You mentioned sprint cars. Ricky and his program with uh, Jason Johnson Racing, they've combined. Your program is uh, pretty big in the sprint car racing right now. 360, 12 wins in 2012 with Jason Johnson. Yeah, the sprint car uh, background was certainly a big part of Ricky's uh, uh, training. And uh, the fact he's able to be involved with the program and still, uh, still feed off of that is a great. But I can't say too much about Ricky Sennel Sr. Ricky Sr. You know, created for Ricky the environment at home and the, the example that, uh, that's manifested itself in the fine young man. And the, uh, I, I can't go on with that now. But <laughs> any, any, anyway, he's, uh, the Ricky Sr. deserves all the credit. That's not what you told me last week. <laughs> there he is. 
Joining, uh, joining Jack here at the table now is our race winner, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., driver of the number six Cargill Sam's Club Ford, who won today's Kansas Lottery 300 here at Kansas.